That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Joyride, the directorial debut of Adele Lim, which uh, just premiered at the 2023 South by Southwest Film Festival. It is going to be released on July 7th, 2023, courtesy of Lionsgate. Directorial debut. Yes, she uh, is notably the writer of Crazy Rich Asians oh. and uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. The story follows four Asian American friends as they bond and discover the truth of what it means to know and love who you are while they travel through Asia in search of one of their birth mothers. This makes it sound, sound more endearing than it is. And cohesive. And cohesive. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought this movie was okay, barely. <laughs> I agree. I feel like it's working overtime to get those laughs and it's throwing so many things at us uh, at a mile a minute, not a lot of it sticks, and it's also a little formulaic. And that said, uh, I do believe in the importance of representation. Uh, this film likely will have more meaning for an intended audience than it does for me, but I found it hitting a lot of the same beats about many women going on a road trip films do. So Audrey... Mm -hmm. Played by Ashley Park. Of Emily in Paris and Beef. She and her best friend Lola. Mm -hmm. Sherry Cole, Lolo, Sherry Cola, who's in, uh, Sherry Cola, who's in Good Trouble and Claws. So these two grew up together. Uh, Audrey was adopted by white parents and Lolo was raised by her bio parents who were Chinese. And we understand Audrey is Chinese as well. So they meet when they're little kids and we get a little montage of them growing up together as the best of friends. So now as adults, I believe they're both approaching 30 years old, Audrey is a very successful attorney and Lolo's kind of a loafer. Yeah, her parents own a restaurant. She lives in an ADU off the property of Audrey's. She lives at Audrey's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, pays her rent, uh, but seems to not be as ambitious as her parents or Audrey want her to be. So we meet Audrey as an adult. She's working for this firm. Uh, the, the person who runs it is very problematic, which we can get into. But he basically tells her, if you can secure a contract with a new client in China, we'll make you partner. And she's like, yeah, I speak Chinese. I know all about it. I'll take care of it. But that's not true. Audrey does not speak Chinese. She's not very connected to her Chinese culture, probably as a result of not being raised by Chinese parents. So she employs her best friend Lolo to come with her and work as translator. So they make their way to China, but before they leave, Lolo's cousin, who calls herself Dead Eye, played by Sabrina Wu, mm -hmm. she joins. Mm -hmm. She's really into K-pop and seems to be rather socially awkward. Yeah. So they get there and we find out that Audrey's best friend from college, Kat, mm -hmm. is also in the same area of China working. She's like a famous actor. Yeah, uh, played by recent Oscar nominee Stephanie Hsu. So the four of them meet and this business meeting takes place at a nightclub, like a full on nightclub. And we meet the CEO of this new customer. It's comedian Ronnie Sheng. And they are going in, mm -hmm. like hangover style. Mm -hmm. And at a point, the CEO tells Audrey, he finds out that she's adopted. After she throws up on him. Mm -hmm. There are some moments. Mm -hmm. He says, I can't really do business with someone who doesn't know who they are. Like, if you don't know your Chinese parents, like, how can I relate to you? Uh, that all didn't really make work for me, but whatever. But Lolo, trying to be a good best friend tells the guy, oh, actually, we're going to go see Audrey's birth mother tomorrow. And they're, they're really close. Mm -hmm. And he's like, great, we'll bring her to my mom's 70th birthday party on Friday, and we'll seal the deal then. But of course, Audrey's freaking out because she doesn't know her birth mother. But early in the film, before Audrey and Lolo leave for their trip, Audrey's parents show her a picture of her bio mom and on the back there's some writing that Audrey never Audrey doesn't speak or read Chinese of any sort so she didn't know what it said mm -hmm. but when Lolo sees it she's like oh this is the adoption agency your mom dropped you off at and it says that your mom was open to being contacted 
And Audrey says, no, that's weird. I don't want to do that. But of course, we find out that Lolo actually called and got the information. So after they meet the CEO and promise to meet the, bring the mom, they go on like an adventure to find the mom. Mm -hmm. And it's calamitous. We lose track a little bit along the way. But we do get to the adoption agency and a bomb is dropped. Mm -hmm. That lady was like, oh, yeah, I remember you from 30 years ago. I, re I remember your mom tells the story. She's like, yeah, your mama couldn't wait to get back to Korea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Audrey finds out she's not Chinese. She's mm -hmm. Korean. But the way the lady says it is like everybody knew she was Korean. So why her parents didn't know she was Korean is weird. But we can get to it. So then they decide to go to Korea. Like, but another big mm -hmm. plot point is that they on the train to get to wherever they were going, some lady stole their passports. Uh huh. A drug dealer with a very over the top uh, drug. Table. We can get to it, and so they can't like get like they can't fly commercially to go to Korea. So we can get to how they get there, but it's this elaborate scheme that ultimately results in them taking a cargo boat to Korea. Mm -hmm. They get there, and Audrey finds out her mom is dead. But there's an incident that happens, which we can talk about, where the four friends kind of get mad at each other and split up. As is to be expected uh, in this, the trajectory of this narrative. Audrey ends up meeting her birth mom's husband, who is not her dad. Technically, he'd be her stepdad. Like her stepdad. And he shares with her some stuff, which we can get into. And then everyone goes back to the U.S. They reunite. They decide they're going to be the best of friends. And then we flash forward one year. And, we're, and we see that they consider this China-Korea trip their first annual best friends trip. So one year later, they're on their second annual best friends trip and they go to Paris, France. The end. Mm -hmm. And they're all very successful in what they're, whatever they're You doing. already said this, but it is doing a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I thought maybe like 30% sticks. Yeah, I don't mind think, uh, a good slapstick, com slapstick comedy that's doing a lot, but it doesn't... It's not landing a lot of the jokes. No. And and it's a pity because all four of the leads are quite charming and interesting on screen, which is, I think, how some of that is able to be salvageable. One of my biggest problems with the characters comes with Audrey. This very, We're told she's a very successful lawyer. Like, we get all her accolades and... The person she works for is very problematic. He makes a lot of racist and misogynist comments. But under the guise of being an ally. But he, so, so that's the joke. Mm -hmm. And we find out like he threw uh, Audrey like a Mulan themed birthday party. Like this grown ass woman. Uh -huh. uh, he just says all kinds of crazy shit. And it just seems so unbelievable that she ends up getting fired. Mm -hmm. Because when... They try to make their way to Korea without passports. They have the bright idea that Deadeye, because she's super awkward, she doesn't have any friends except for these people who she met online who are really into K-pop like she is. Mm -hmm. So she says, don't worry, I'll get us to Korea. So they go to this like private airport to get on a private plane because they, they, they say they don't need passports. If because... They're posing as a newly minted K-pop group. They're pretending to be a K- And this is in the trailer where they're like mm -hmm. performing as a K-pop group. And we find out that for a minute, Deadeye thinks, oh my gosh, my friend flaked on me. He really isn't my friend. But then this person shows up and apparently is super rich. He paid for this private plane. He also brought like a hundred people to pretend to be their fans. And then these four ladies have to prove to the like... The customs agents still don't believe it, so they, we have to be treated to a K-pop performance on the fly. Which actually, you probably wrote this down too, this movie is on the level of 80 for Brady. Um, I leaned over and I said they, they have to do that to get into the Super Bowl. In and Brady. that's what the ladies do in 80 for Brady. They perform with Billy Porter to uh -huh. get into the Super Bowl. These women have to perform to get in, onto the plane. And they perform a version of Cardi B... Featuring Megan Stallion, WAP, Wet Ass mm -hmm. Pussy, mm -hmm. which was very uncomfortable to me. Well, because it also goes off into like an animated thing as well. It, it's just like this fantasy sequence that I did not think works, but it com or it ends with Kat, who her character up to this point is pretending to be a virgin who is very Christian because she is in a relationship with this impossibly attractive man who's also a very religious virgin. 
And her co-star in her series. And is also her co-star. Desmond. Or Clarence, played by Desmond Heim. So this little music montage ends with her getting really excited performing and her like pants fall and her vagina is exposed. And we see that her vagina is covered in a tattoo of the devil. We get in a shot from the inside because we see that the devil's horns go in. And then we see the inside of her vagina. And this was being live streamed. By Lolo. And it goes viral. Mm -hmm. So. And Clarence is somehow, for some reason, at this airport to see it firsthand. Doesn't make any sense. No. But the shit goes viral. Kat loses her acting gigs. The CEO of this company who was supposed to sign this contract for Audrey's law firm says, I can't do business with you because of this. So she loses her job. Mm -hmm. It just is like, I can't believe this attorney, first of all, wouldn't have any recourse. Like you have this, you have many lawsuits available to you over how this person's treated you. And then it never gets resolved. Like she gets fired and we never come back to, I was fully expecting her because we find out that she starts her own law firm. I was fully expecting her character to say, oh, I sued my previous employer. And with that money, I started my own law firm. Yeah. You know? it, it's it's like the film <laughs> subconsciously is setting up these things that it, it didn't, or maybe it ended up on the cutting room floor that it doesn't take care of. Because the bigger, the bigger glaring issue for me here is we find out that she's Korean. She's been treated like she, her heritage is Chinese and not and hasn't stayed well connected with that even. And then the way that Lolo, because there's a, a, a segment where they're at Lolo's grandparents. Yeah. And the way they treat Audrey after they find out she's actually Korean. You know, there's this whole contentious history between China, Japan, and Korea that, of course, I don't expect this comedy to get into, to get into but... The fact that there's not a scene, at least with her white adopted parents, to be like, hey, how come you didn't have this information? Right. You took me from China, sure, but... As and from a mom who was open to staying, to being reached out to. Right. And the lady who gave you, like, the person working at the adoption center knew you on site, knew your mama's story. How could the parents have not known that you are not Chinese? Right. And to me, that would that is would be such kind of an identity crisis that is really worth examining. Well, since you're talking about it, I think the better story, based off what this movie is, would have been, <clears throat> is make it simple. Just make it about this young lady who was adopted by white parents, and she decides that she wants to go to China to find her birth mother. And then it turns into this calamitous, outrageous trip with this young lady who's not really well connected with her heritage. And then at, at the, in the third act, we realize like, and she's not even Chinese. That it, it could have just been so much more effective, but because there's so much happening and then it doesn't go anywhere, I just felt like my head was spinning. There's a there's another film from last year that is called Return to Soul, was the title it ended up having, directed by Davy Shu. And it's French. Uh, it's about... a uh, young Korean woman that's adopted by French parents and as the title said she does return to try to find her birth parents and kind of all the developmental issues she, that's a very serious film but to me that that is kind of I needed something like that to give Audrey this sense of closure somehow because it feels real fast and loose and kind of in, in a way that I don't think it means to be demeaning but <laughs> to talk about some things I did think were funny, so Lolo makes like very sexually, she's obsessed with sex and makes like sexually suggestive artwork. And one of the first pieces of art we see, she brings to her parents' restaurant, and it's a replica of the playground Audrey and Kat used to play, or Audrey and Lolo used to play in. <laughs> and all of the uh, like features of the playground are like, like, sex organs mm -hmm. and like there's a titty sandbox and like the slide looks like a vagina mm -hmm. i thought that was funny then when we get to the nightclub in china with the the what's the comedian's name ronnie shen um i did think it was funny because they are going hard they are drinking way too much like they're eating dumplings up in the club it was too much and then he orders they're already drunk and Audrey's like, no, we have to do it because... I have to keep up with the men. Chinese businessmen believe that if you can keep up with them, it's a sign of respect or whatever. So she's already too drunk. And then he brings out these, I believe it's like thousand-year-old shots, which they, have they like, eggs like fermented eggs in mm -hmm. them, which is so gross. It causes 
Audrey to throw up on the CEO. Then they start playing a slapping game. I thought that shit that was, was a funny scene. It was funny because we get at this point Lolo and Cat hate each other because they're kind of competing for Audrey's attention. Yeah, and they start slapping each other, and somebody on the side of the sideline stops them like, "I don't know what you're doing, but this is supposed to be a game." <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. The train ride. So they're trying to find a car to sit in. Like, you know, when you're on a train, you have to share seats in a car. And they find this, like, lone white girl. And so Audrey... I Because the joke is supposed to be that Audrey's so white. She's so white. She's not even Chinese. So, of course, she doesn't feel comfortable sitting with other Chinese people. They, they make a big deal about her being afraid of getting robbed. Even though her friend's telling her, like, this area of China is, like, super safe. Mm -hmm. So the joke is supposed to be the one white girl on the train you think she's safe but she actually turns out to be a drug dealer who sets them up i thought that scene was so ridiculous and not fun it could have been fun because well this is how why it isn't fun because that lady has like all of the drugs in her possession like bags and bags of pills cocaine and the police are coming checking all this the cabins so this girl tells the four ladies you either need to shove these drugs up your ass or you need to consume them so we get a montage of them shoving drugs up their orifices. Either way, you're going down with me because you're also tourists. Or you're consuming them. And then they consume all these drugs and they don't even seem that high or dead. And then the result is the authorities realize that they're high, but they say, we don't want to deal with it. We'll just kick them off the train. So they get kicked off in the middle of nowhere. Lucky them, yeah. And then guess who shows up? Not Lolo has like an F buddy who plays for like an Australian basketball team that happens to be in this area of China and happens to be riding down this dirt road they're on, picks them up, takes them to the hotel. None of this to me really was working. Then they get to the hotel and we get a montage of all of them being sexual at the same time. Except for Deadeye who's having so, like a K-pop contest with one of the teammates. So Audrey's kind of stiff. So her thing is like she needs to be... Well, then they say you never had sex with an Asian guy. So then she finds two Asian guys, like, um, to have sex with. So they have a threesome. Well, one one is Indian, I believe. Not white, basically. It's the joke. They're showing likes white men. Then Kat meets an old, like, boyfriend... But because she's supposed to be a virgin, she's acting like she doesn't want to be with him. But she hasn't had sex in three years. So they simulate sex by using like a massager and a basketball that I thought was over the top. The basketball deflates, yeah. Then... And, and anyway, they injure all of the teammates that they're interacting with. Yeah. But again, I just thought like that was kind of like trying really hard trying. to be raunchy. Mm -hmm. Um then it's during all this period where I feel like we forgot about the birth mother. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess I don't like, cause there are too many things driving the plot. Like you, like you have the CEO who needs to sign a contract or you're out of a job, but you also have to find your birth mother. But now you're in a hotel. I don't know. Oh, the other thing I didn't point out is we're told they're only in China for four days. Mm -hmm. They have to find the birth mother, make sure that she's going to want to agree to come to this party with her and pretend like they're close. You know, at this point of the game, I would have been like, we're picking any old Chinese lady to say that she's my mom and pay her. Right. And, and we were just going to go with that. <laughs> but in these four days, they do all this, take a cargo boat to Korea. And we see them spend the night, like at least two nights somewhere. It was just way too much i will say at the point where we see lolo uh her, her grandparents uh you could get Lori tan chin as the grandma who i think is very funny oh there is an there Which, is another do you, did you recognize her from um, yes she devil she yes the vesta rose and <laughs> she is very funny I, I thought the family even though it doesn't delve into the relationship between because we do get a lot of commentary about like the chinese people we're seeing talking about other like Asian people in mm -hmm. a way that, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, even when they end up in the airport in Beijing, Lola makes some comment like, see them over there. You can see, you can see they're Korean because all their faces look the same. Another really funny moment is after Kat's devil vagina tattoo goes viral, we're told that there's a meme of Bugs Bunny that says, I taught, I taught putty tat. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really funny. And I mean, I, 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 
it does make sense that if she's in a, a because China's very conservative, she was in a Chinese series that she would lose her job. But she also, Cat uh, has a job, a, a film lined up in L.A. And it's like, I think you'd probably still be fine. But then we find out that after the scandal, Greta Gerwig hired her to do a movie. Yeah. Um, so probably the, I think I'm so disappointed because, like you said, I did like all of the leads. Mm -hmm. Like, they were charming. And then... So, Audrey's birth mother, who died, she made a video for Audrey in hopes that one day she'll mm -hmm. get to see it. And it made me cry. I did. Like, I was kind of rolling my eyes through a lot of this, and then all of a sudden I'm crying at this this one brief three-minute moment. Yeah. It's like, that's really well done. Where, But again, that's where we stop kind of the shenanigans, and it's, it's a breather moment as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like, you know, because we're comparing this to something like Girls Trip, which I think is a little more successful, and, like, there's there's a little more breathing room for us to enjoy these people. It doesn't have to be them constantly entertaining or trying to entertain us. Then getting back to the vagina tattoo, we find out that Deadeye... Because of, cause randomly, I think it's Lolo who says, now that we're all back together, let's get matching tattoos. And Deadeye goes, oh, I got one. And they're like, yeah, right. She's like, no, I did. And then she takes off her bottoms. And she has also received a vagina tattoo. And hers lights up. Mm -hmm. And we also see it from the inside out. Mm -hmm. That that felt like way too much to be. Like, it just makes no sense. Mm -hmm. I feel bad that I am being so negative. No, well, it was very well received at South by Southwest, and we're probably, you know, in the minority, in the minority on this. But I didn't dislike it, but I, I felt like it's, it's like you're building up to a laugh that just doesn't come. If I were on an airplane watching this, I would be satisfied enough. Like, it would be fine. What would you give this movie? Uh, two and a half. I would give it two and a half out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, 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 o